Don't worry if it's not good enough for anyone else to hear. Just sing, sing a song. You might have noticed that's basically the way I live anymore. I know I'm not a great singer, but on the other hand, screw you if you don't like it. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, and speaking of which, a little side note. Uh, my buddy Finkel had an idea of me and him doing a, uh, I don't know, I guess it'd be called a panel, podcast type thing about uh, music. Not quite sure what it's, what the format's going to be. He's talking about like choosing so many songs a week and talking about them. I think it'll come out better than the West Wing discussion we tried to have. But uh, I'll let you all know when that's happening. Um, now, you know, the thing about those uh, discussions, the panels like that, we'll be doing them live, but then they're recording, they're up there for later. So if I tell you, oh, we're going to be doing this, you know, Tuesdays at, you know, 1145 or something, just, that doesn't mean you have to watch it Tuesday, 11.45. You can watch it later on that day or a week later. Hopefully later that day because otherwise you'll forget and I'll be sad. Anyway, not what I was going to talk about today. I was in a uh, discussion group. I think last night, I'm not sure, but uh, the topic came up about uh, telemarketers and I thought it might be interesting to uh, relay a couple of my experiences with them because they amused me and also because uh, I couldn't think of anything else to talk about today. So. I really don't get them a whole lot anymore. Um, well, I think I do actually, but they seem to mostly come in on my cell phone. And well, in fact, I probably do get them on the other. Okay. Maybe I'll complete a sentence so you know what the hell I'm saying. Because I just realized my landline, as we call it in the biz, blocks anonymous numbers because uh, somebody in the one discussion mentioned about uh, if you put star 67 I think before you dial a number then it then you're anonymous and we're they're wondering if it still worked and I tested it by calling my landline and the call didn't go through I got a recording that said uh, this number doesn't accept anonymous calls and then I tried reversing it and calling myself from the landline and that's when I remembered my cell phone is set up so that any calls like that my phone doesn't even ring it just goes straight into uh spam folder I think so I guess I still call them and still get them I just never realize it but as we like to say in the Finkel sphere I digress uh, but anyway so the last time I remember actually talking to one of those people was one of those uh extended warranty people. I think it's been at least a year ago, maybe two years ago. And I decided, you know, a lot of times when I get calls and then be like, now, if you know me, you know, I can't do accents, but just pretend that, you know, it's the old 
Hello. And see, that wasn't good at all. This, hello, my name is Charles, you know, and yeah, that was really bad. Anyway, an obvious Indian accent, in case you were wondering what I was trying to do there. And it's like, yeah, right, Charles. And usually I just go, yeah, Nick. Uh, that Nick was a sound uh, that I made instead of uh, bleep. Um, but one time I was in the mood, I decided to do what I used to do years ago when you couldn't do anything about them calling. You know, back before they even had the do not call list, which basically don't work anymore. Um, and you didn't even have caller ID, so you could look at and go, I don't know that number. I'm not going to interrupt my dinner for them. Or So anyway, I would, just to mess with them, I would talk to them for however long I could keep it, keep it going. Because, you know, those people get uh, paid by the sale, not by the hour. So if you could waste their time, you're basically costing them money. And I always felt uh, you're going to call up and bother me, then I'm going to bother you back. So yeah, like uh, like I said, the most recent one I got was one of those. And you know, if you ever talk to those people, what happens is they, you, you first you get, you know, Charles. And if you express any interest, it's like, well, I'm going to pass you on to the next person. And so then the next person, is, you know, Charles is just uh, there to, like, gauge your interest. And if they think you're interested, then they pass you on to the person that's going to actually sell you the thing. And, you know, they ask questions. I made up a car because I knew they probably weren't going to offer me a... Uh, extended warranty on a 20-year-old explorer. But I talked to the second person, and now they think the sale is made, and they pass me on to the last person who actually takes your credit card information and stuff. Which, by the way, those uh, things are expensive. I forget how much it was now. And you had to give them, like, the first couple months up front or something, I forget. Anyway, when I got to the third person on that, then I pretty much said, what are you, crazy? But uh, that was just uh, two, uh, two I remember from earlier days that I always enjoyed. Um, one was I got a call from a credit card company the one time. And, you know, it was the deal of... Uh, you know, you could transfer your balance from the card you have now to this card. And there would be no fee and whatever, you know. Um, and so I was talking to the guy and asking questions about, uh, well, what is the, uh, you know, what's the percentage in the interest and, you know, what's this? And you know, when he, he wanted me to, uh, I had to give him the number from my current card. And I said, and, you know, it was like this. And he wants me to give him the number from my current card. And I'm like, well, hold on. My wallet is in the other room. I'll have to get it. And I'm like, boop a doop. And I waited a couple minutes. And then I pick up the phone again. I'm like, you still there? Hold on a second. It must be in it must be in my bedroom. Do 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 do. Yeah. So basically, then I, I pretended to come back and talk to him. And I asked him couple more questions. I said, well, first, before I give you my card numbers, I thought of a couple more things, and I forget what. And I could start to hear a little frustration in his voice, you know. It's like, when is this guy going to give me his number? So anyway, I, I said, 
Okay, I, said, I just have one more question. And he's like, what's that? I said, what color is the card? He said, oh, uh, this is our gold card. And I said, no, what is the actual physical color of the card? And he says, um, I believe it. <clears throat> I believe it's green. And I said, oh, well, that would clash with my wallet. Click. So that one I always like. <clears throat> but my favorite ever. I was down at Lee's the one time. People who know me know who that is. And I actually have, I think I've mentioned him before. We and Shirley, uh, they were good friends of mine and literally old enough to be my father because I graduated with their son, Paul. <coughs> I got to be got to be good friends with his parents and even like when I was up in Pittsburgh when I'd come home I'd always stop in and see them and then after I was living back here again I'd go down periodically and um especially like after Shirley died we always invited Lee to any of our gatherings and that but anyway uh so I was down at Lee's the one time, and we were out on the uh, back patio. I think he had grilled some fish or something, which, uh, don't tell Lee, even though he's been dead for I don't know how many years. I'm not really a fan of grilled fish. Um, I'm not a fan of, like, fish fish in general. You know, I like, I like shellfish. I try not to be too shellfish. <laughs> See, You'd see what, I, anyway. Um, but, you know, love lobster. Boy, I haven't had it in a while. Um, and uh, um, crab, not as much as lobster. Shrimp, always like shrimp. A um, little tip for you. I like to, I'll get a bag of shrimp periodically. And I like to get the pre-cooked ones. And when you get pre-cooked shrimp, I mean, you can actually just open the bag, you rinse them off because they'll be like, they're frozen. And you rinse them off and it thaws them. And then you can dip them right in the cocktail sauce and they taste okay. But what I always do is give them a quick little stir fry. Because, and you'll notice, you buy the shrimp and they're like this. You just give, and when I say quick, I'm talking like maybe at the most two minutes with them, with constantly stirring them. But after you do that, they'll go from this down to here because they somehow infuse water into them. And so, like I say, do it just improves the taste like 300%. Maybe, maybe 307%. Um, but anyway, like I said, I like shellfish. Uh, um, and I like, uh, I guess they're all like mollusk, right? Any of the stuff. Like clams, okay. I like oysters. I was never a big fan of mussels. And I don't know what a cockle is. You know, that's from that uh, song... Alive, alive, oh, alive, alive, oh. Selling cockles and mussels, alive, alive, oh. I suppose I could go to the Google machine and find out what a cockle is. I I always just assumed it was maybe a uh, another name for oysters. Um, any idea where I was going with this? Oh, I'm not a, I was never like a real big fan of just like, like my mother used to make baked haddock. And it's like, yeah, I'll eat it. I like, like most fried fish, yeah. But like grilled, uh, you know, just that kind of fish like that is, you know, you always see people uh, talk about the, like on, on TV or something, they're having smoked salmon or whatever. And you know, I like salmon cakes. And I like tuna fish. 
I know that grosses some people out, but I like to get a can of tuna fish and mix in some mayonnaise and have a sandwich. Um, oh my God, I have no idea. Oh, <laughs> I couldn't even remember what my original subject was. That's right, so I'm down at Lee's. And he uh, had grilled a fish, I think. We're out on the back patio. And I went inside to uh, get us a couple of beers. And that tells you something about, like, our relationship was, you know, I just sort of went in and out. You know, kind of kind of like, um, almost family, I guess. Um, I tend to think of, uh, it's like, you know how... Um, a lot of uh, like clubs, I think of like the VFW, if anybody's familiar with them is, you know, it's a club for vets, but, and if you can join as a uh, non-veteran with, well, well, vets, I just realized they call it a social member, but some clubs like that, you can be like, I'll call them ex auxiliary, where you're not quite a member, but you're sort of member adjacent. So that's the way I sort of feel about like uh, the lanes. I was like an auxiliary lane. Um, anyway, I went in for the beer and the phone rang. See, I'm finally getting to the point. Um, this is my favorite uh, screw with uh, telemarketer story of all time. That's why I have to tell you. Anyway, I went in, I was getting the beer out of the refrigerator, the phone rang, and I answered it. Um, I think I said, uh, hello, Lanes. Because, you know, I thought it could be someone Lee wanted to talk to. And the guy said, oh, hello, Mr. Lane. I'm calling from Miracle Ear. Now, I don't know, uh, I don't know if there are, are they all over the country? Does everybody know Miracle Ear is at the hearing aid people? Anyway, he says, I'm calling from Miracle Ear. I said, Miracle Whip? He says, no, sir, Miracle Ear. I said, you're calling about Miracle Whip? No, no, sir, Miracle Ear, Miracle Ear. I was like, who the hell? sells mayonnaise over the phone. He's like, no, sir, no, I'm calling from Miracle Ear. And I, like, kept this up for, I don't know, not real long. At least five, somewhere between five and ten minutes, I think. And finally, that's why well, you could hear him getting frustrated, but I think he was also probably sniffing out a s sale at the same time. And he said it again, Miracle. And I said, oh, you mean the hearing aid people? He goes, yes, sir, yes. And I said, uh, nobody here needs one of those. And I hung up. And I could just imagine what he thought afterwards. It's like, if anybody needs one of those, it's this idiot I just talked to that couldn't understand when I was saying Miracle Air. But anyway... Like I say, I never get those calls anymore for various reasons, and it's mostly a good thing, but every once in a while it'd be nice just to screw around with uh, people like that. Of course, now uh, you can't even tell where they're calling from. You know, the way they spoof the numbers? I've, I've never had it done. I mean, I've gotten spoofed numbers, you know. They'll make it look like it's someone calling from a local phone number. So you're thinking, oh, this might be someone I know. Um, and, but I've heard people say they've actually, the caller ID will show them their own number that they're calling themselves, you know, to sell them uh, an extended warranty. But uh, yes, yeah, so that makes it harder to avoid them. So tell you what you do. If you don't know yet, if you have a landline, figure out what the uh, what you have to put in there to block um, anonymous calls. And if you have a cell phone, 
figure out the setting in there that just sends them to a uh, spam folder and without ringing your phone. It kind of saves you from being annoyed. But, but the one thing you want to make sure you don't do is look at your, you know, you check your messages and you have, you know, we're calling from this insurance company or whatever, and you you call the number back, and you're like, why the hell are you calling me? And meanwhile, the person on the other end of the line has no idea what you're talking about because the idiots that called you is spoofing the number. Um, so that's about, there's, there's one related one that I won't uh, go into it totally. It was a little different. I think this is how the conversation got started. Someone else mentioned about getting calls from a bill collector. And it was like, right, not long after I first got my uh, current home phone number, I started getting calls. And it was, uh, they went to Tom. And they were calling about his past due loan or whatever it was. And... And I said, well, this is not Tom. I said, this is a new number. Tom must have been who had this number. I said, so it's like, uh, you should take it off your list. And uh, then they'd call back. And, well, the interesting thing is, they did mention Tom's last name. And it's a guy, I knew who he was. He was a couple years ahead of me in school, but I'm not going to give your give his last name here. But anyway, uh, so they kept calling. I kept telling them it's not, it's not me. And finally, after a while, I started telling them stuff like, uh, you know, well, go ahead and take me to court then. And you know, I probably uh, used uh, some unflattering language and, you know, mentioned things about their mother that isn't really prop proper, but. Eventually they did stop. I kept hoping that they really did try to uh, do a lawsuit and say that the person's been totally unreasonable and we've called him 43 times. And meanwhile, uh, Tom would like have his, have the phone records go, uh, I never got a call from these people. Anyway, so yeah, telephones, huh? Can't live with them. Can't uh, swim with them. I don't know. So remember, uh, keep an eye out for that thing. Uh, me and the uh, Fink uh, doing a music uh, program. I think it could be interesting. And peace out.